Hi everybody, Melissa Klein here and I'm here to talk to you about how to do color matching. And um, here I've taken my Kuretake uh, watercolor set and I've arranged it around the color wheel. And there was this red brick color that I couldn't place on, you know, anywhere on the wheel because I said, you know, this is a combination of at least two, at least three different colors, which would be, you know, red, blue, and yellow ochre. And so what I wanted to do was sort of show you how to do color matching. Um, usually with color matching, you would be trying to match maybe a color in a landscape or a color that, you know, on flesh tones from a real model or something or a photograph. Uh, it's a little bit unusual to be doing a color match off of a, you know, a, a thing of paint because the argument would be like, well, why would you color match that? Because you already have it as a paint. Um, but let's just say for the sake of argument, uh, what, you know, this is my watercolor set. Um, I'm painting in acrylics on a mural and I want to get, let's say the brick red of a tree, uh, of a Madrona tree. Well, that's pretty much this red, the, you know, this brick red, um, I'm calling it brick red, but it's really much more complicated. Um, and you know, I don't want to have to get a new, can of paint for every single color that I would need. And in fact, when I was painting um, the um, the the airport airplane hangar mural, which involved trees and a, a Piper Cub airplane on it, I used uh, two yellows, two reds, two blues, a black and a white to do that entire mural with um, you know different types of trees and uh, the the plane itself is. And I was totally fine. Um, and the reason, and the client was kind of amazed that I didn't really need that many colors. And the answer is because I could color match um, and mix colors. Um, but that said, this is a really kind of an interesting exercise to, you know, prove to you about how to do color mixing. Um, and a lot of times what you'll get to uh, many paint sets will, especially the bigger paint sets like this one, will have uh, what I would call convenience colors, uh, you know, to just give you a, a little bit of a shortcut. And that's a nice thing, uh, very handy, but a lot of times when people particularly uh, are, you know, amateur beginning painters, they'll be like, I don't understand why my all my paintings look like, you know, they're done like a kid's, they're like Crayola out of the box, like Crayola crayon thing. And it's because they just don't know yet, hopefully, how to mix colors. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling different reds and I'm like, which red is the closest do I feel is the most? Because there's a little bit of a disconnect between what you see in the paint pan versus when you put it on a palette or when you put it on uh, a paper or whatever your medium is it just shifts a little bit and there's also a difference between when it's wet and when it's dry and then I'm like all right it needs some blue in there now that now you look at it compared to the um, what's in the paint pan um, the brick red it's like oh it's too blue now I'm like now it's too red so now I'm going to add a little bit more of the yellow ochre um, and I'm like well now it's looking kind of orangey so how can I get orange and I'm going you know doing the blue and it's funny because as I'm narrating this and watching this like um, you know I just know what I'm going to do because uh, I had you know I just know that if it looks too one way like too red um, then you can add more blue if it looks too, um, you know, you can just add what's across the color wheel. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm testing out my blues because, you know, as you can see, I've got anything from like a teal blue to, um, you know, a sky blue, more of what you call a sky blue. And then I'd go for the indigo blue. The indigo actually says, has to me a little bit of black in it even too. So that's, that even might be a little bit of a convenience here I'm adding a little bit of orange um, because I'm just feeling like eh, it's looking a little bit too. But notice that I'm getting closer. I would say comparing uh, what I have in the palette to what's on the uh, paint pan, you know, now I'm like, hmm, it's a little bit, it's, you know, looking, now it's looking a little bit dark uh, and a little bit too red, which says to me like, hmm, the other, the, the, the thing I'm trying to match looks more yellow. That's another way to look at it too. Like, okay, if the other one looks more yellow compared to what I have mixed, then obviously I would 
add more yellow. So just kind of keep asking yourself, like if it looks, what color could I add to make it push this color that I'm mixing closer to it? So here I go, I'm adding more yellow. A uh, little side note too with yellow is that I tend to add, uh, I tend to order twice as much yellow uh, as I do any other color. Um, and it doesn't matter which red, like, um, you know, or which yellow, I mean. Um, so when I go to order colors, I'll usually order a yellow ochre, a warm yellow, and a cool, cool yellow. And I'll just automatically get two of those. Um, and I'll usually get two whites as well, um, you know, especially if I'm ordering for students. Here you can see I'm adding a little bit, you know, kind of going in. Sometimes it helps to go into a little bit different ink wells or pans or things. Sometimes it helps to just go start stra start fresh. Uh, if you're like, wow, I seem to have mixed this you know, large amount of something that is really not close to what I want. Now, if you compare it to the original stripe on the left, uh, you know, okay, what I have is now a little bit too red. Um, it's getting closer, you know. <laughs> I'm also playing around with the gradient uh, a little bit and seeing like, okay, how can I, um, sometimes it's good to do the gradient because especially if you have a more complicated color, when you thin it out, you'll, different elements might pop out. I'm also just kind of moving these little pans around, uh, partially for instructional, but also partially so that I don't mix the wrong thing, you know. Um, because I know that that teal color is not going to work for me. Um, and once again, you know, going for, okay, it's still not looking quite yellow enough. Uh, there's more yellow in that stripe. Um, and going into that yellow ochre uh, again as well. Um, and so there's just, you just kind of have to be patient with yourself and hang in there with it and keep kind of pushing your colors one way or the other. Because the other thing I would also say is that even if you mix a quote unquote color that's horrible for the project or wrong for the project uh, that you're trying to do at the time, you know, it's going to be in your memory bank. So like there's been times that like later on I'll realize, oh yeah, you know, that, that weird green I mixed or whatever, that'd be perfect for this. Okay, so now I'm feeling like I'm getting closer, so I'm doing this last stripe, you know, right next to my original color match. You know, it's it's definitely closer. It's still a little bit off. I would say that, you know, if I did this another, maybe another one or two times, I could probably get it even closer. Um, but there's really nothing lost in doing this exercise. Here I'm cheating a little bit. I'm going right into the, you know, notice again, once again, I'm like, oh, more yellow ochre, more yellow ochre. Um, and I'm, you know, d even dipping directly from the pan and putting it right in onto the stripe. You'll see uh, in, a, in a minute with it. And, you know, there's, it's, it's just a really good exercise to try to do this color matching. There I go, dipping right, right into there. I always think about the horse trainer I know who's like, hey, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, <laughs> you know. Uh, some would be like, oh, you're cheating. I'm like, no, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I am. But <laughs> uh, did you match your color? Yes. <laughs> Was there any rules about how you got it to match? No. So, um, you know, give yourself some liberty to play around with that to get it there. Um, and, you know, here I'm just kind of pulling. These are the main colors that I use. So I use four different colors to get, um, to get this, you know, brick red. So I was right. Ha, I proved it. <laughs> you know, play around, find something that you can hold next to, uh, your painting or uh, your color swatches as you mix them. So you can really compare it and good luck. I look forward to seeing you on zoom.